Trino is one of the fastest, most powerful SQL query engines out there. If you've been poking around the Starburst YouTube channel, you've probably heard that enough times. But how is it able to pull off its impressive performance at immense scale? That's a complicated topic without a simple, satisfying answer, because Trino has a sophisticated design with a lot of optimizations. I'm Cole Bowden from Starburst, and let's talk about that. Trino is a distributed SQL query engine with massively parallel processing. Rather than rely on vertical scaling by making a single server more powerful, it is able to distribute all processing across a cluster of many servers, which is referred to as horizontal scaling. This means that you can add more nodes and servers to your Trino cluster to gain more processing power. The coordinator is the boss server in a Trino cluster. There is only one coordinator node in each Trino deployment. It handles incoming queries, then delegates work to the many worker nodes. We'll get back to worker nodes in a bit. But for now, we'll focus on what the coordinator does the instant a query is submitted, and then we'll travel through the life of a Trino query. When you submit a query to Trino, you're writing SQL in plain text and sending it to the Trino coordinator. The coordinator has to parse from text into representation of the query that can be analyzed, understood, and executed. It uses a tool called Antler to do this, breaking down the query into individual statements, identifiers, and expressions that the Trino engine can understand. Once the coordinator has parsed the query, it analyzes the query and creates a query plan. The query plan broadly represents the steps it will take to process the data and return your results. During this time, the coordinator uses table statistics and metadata to optimize that plan to be as efficient as possible. We'll explore how those optimizations work in just a moment. A distributed query plan is broken down into stages, which represent the high-level steps necessary to complete the query. Stages are then broken down by the coordinator into smaller tasks, and those tasks are scheduled across the worker nodes in the Trino cluster. A query can be broken down into many tasks, with each task processing a small piece of data. As the worker nodes are assigned tasks, they break them down further into units of work called splits, allowing for parallel processing. Splits are the lowest level of abstraction within Trino. They are a single thread performing operations on the data that you're querying. Once all the splits in a task are completed, the worker node is done with the task and communicates with other worker nodes and with the coordinator, compiling results to complete the stage, and then the coordinator moves on to the next stage, breaking it down into tasks and starting that work all over again. That's fundamentally the core of how Trino operates, but let's talk about some of the optimizations present and how they help it do all this work as fast as possible. Predicate pushdown is the simplest, easiest, and most important optimization rule in Trino. The goal of predicate pushdown is to move the filtering of data as close to reading the data as possible, making sure to reduce the amount of data as early on in the query plan as it can. If Trino is only going to return a subset of your data, it's best to start by filtering out the data you don't need, then performing any necessary calculations, rather than perform calculations on the entire table and only select the subset of data you need after. Or in other words, if you're only selecting 10% of your data, predicate pushdown makes sure Trino is only doing 10% of the work downstream. It's pretty common practice to write queries with an order by and limit clause, sorting and then selecting the top few rows from a data set. When you're looking for outliers, top performers are the most notable data points. It's a very common pattern. Naively, this requires sorting the entire table, which is a big theta of rows log rows operation that uses big theta of rows memory, and then selecting the number of rows that you're looking for. However, Trino makes this operation more efficient by converting it into a top n query plan, which maintains a heap of the data to return as it streams through the table, only taking time to sort and store results that are candidates to be returned as a result of the query. This reduces the time complexity to big theta of rows log your limit and the memory footprint to big theta of your limit, rather than all of the rows in the table. If you're selecting a small number of rows from a giant table, that can save a ton of memory and a bit of time. Predicate pushdown and top end are the two biggest optimizations within Trino, but there's plenty more going on. Trino tries to eliminate cross joins, a usually unwanted Cartesian product of two tables that don't share a join condition. By looking ahead to see if the rows of this Cartesian product are later filtered out, Trino can skip doing the work of multiplying all the rows together. It also tries to pre-compute parts of aggregations, so if the end result of a query is an aggregate, it can begin compiling results before computing joins, saving on how much data needs to be joined together. You need to enable this with the optimizer push partial aggregation through join configuration property. Trino also has a cost-based optimizer, which tries to help create the most efficient order for joining tables together. Join order matters because Trino performs joins using a hash join algorithm. A hash join algorithm has a build side and a probe side. The build side is stored in memory as a hash table, and then a hash join streams through the probe while checking for matches on the join condition in the hash table. 
Trino tries to parallelize this process as much as possible in a few sophisticated ways, but ultimately it is very beneficial to have the smaller of the two tables serve as the build side and the larger of the two tables to serve as the probe side. This means that less data ends up stored in that hash table and memory and you save on computation time as streaming through the larger table is faster than constructing a hash table out of it. In the absence of the cost-based optimizer, Trino simply performs joins in the order that they're written in the query. This is a pain for users, who would then need to manually write queries with joins in a specific order from your smallest to your largest tables in order to optimize those queries. But fortunately, the cost-based optimizer handles this within Trino, automatically ordering joins to save users the hassle. However, it's important to note that in order for this to work, the optimizer needs to have table statistics for the tables involved so it knows how large they are. You can't sort joins by table size if you don't know the size of the table. Makes sense, right? Providing table statistics works differently for different connectors, but most commonly this is done by running analyze on your tables. With distributed query execution and clever cost-based and in-query optimizations, it's no surprise that Trino manages to be one of the highest performing query engines out there. But this video is only scratching the surface of that complexity. If you're interested in learning more, Chapter 4 of Trino the Definitive Guide goes into more detail on all of these topics, and you can find a link to it in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.